and welcome to Tuesday Newsday, your number one resource for the entire week's worth of VR news. So much happened this past week, I mean, the ramifications of what just happened will inevitably change VR forever, and it's mostly all good. In fact, probably some of the best things to ever happen to VR so far, but there are some terrifyingly bad parts mixed in too. This is going to be an action-packed episode, a ton happened, and there's likely quite a bit that you missed, including a $200 SteamVR headset that you can build yourself, so let's just get right into the news. So let me start off with Beat Saber is getting multiplayer support in October and a BTS sound pack. Well, that's exciting, but there are some bigger things that happened. Facebook held its annual conference, Facebook Connect, just this past Wednesday. Previously, the event has been called Oculus Connect, but as you've probably heard, Facebook recently took the final bite of their $2 billion acquisition, Oculus, and made some swift changes like reorganizing most of Oculus to be a core component of the Facebook Corporation. One of those changes was changing the name of the event itself. At this event, Oculus revealed lots of things, but the biggest impact that we'll feel immediately is the revealing of the Oculus Quest 2, the next VR headset from Oculus or Facebook. The names are synonymous at this point. Now you may have heard the specs already, but let me go through them really fast to give you an idea of how ridiculous this headset is. The resolution has been bumped up from 1440 by 1600 per eye, the same as the $1,000 Valve Index, by the way, to 1832 by 1920 per eye, an even better resolution than the Valve Index, and nearly a 50% boost in pixels over over last year's model. But of course, we know that higher resolution equals more processing and graphical power needed. And this is where it gets interesting. The Quest 2 has the cutting edge Snapdragon XR2 VR chipset. And when compared to the Quest hardware, we're talking about a 50% or better performance with far more capabilities. Not to mention the system now has six gigabytes of RAM versus the four before. It comes with more comfortable controllers, it's a standalone headset, so no computer required, and has the capability ability to connect to a computer for all your PC VR games like Half-Life Alex or Boneworks. But wait, there's something weird here. The Quest launched with far worse hardware in 2019 for $399, yet the Quest 2 is better in almost every way yet costs less, at only $299 for the 64GB version and $399 for the 256GB version. And it launches in just a month on October 13th. I can't remember the last time in the tech industry where a newer, better version of something costs 25% less than its previous iteration, at least not at this scale. Of course, manufacturing costs seem to be cut down in almost every way possible. The new screen, while higher resolution, utilizes a single panel instead of the two on the Quest, providing a cheaper build cost but requiring a new mechanism for IPD adjustment. The build materials have been switched to mostly plastic, and the new head strap has been switched to an elastic strap. But this isn't why it's so cheap cheap, and we'll talk about why it's so cheap in just a moment, but first I want to talk about the effects this headset will have on the VR industry, because it's going to be massive. Like I said earlier, the Quest 2 is a hybrid VR headset that does PC VR and standalone. It's got a higher resolution than most of its more expensive competition, it's got cutting edge hardware and built-in hand tracking, and it's incredibly cheap. I mean, really, it's incredibly cheap. It's the cheapest launch VR headset ever made, and possibly the most capable launch VR headset ever made. It's going to be massively popular, and if anyone was still wondering when VR will take off, well, I think you're looking at the thing that's going to do it. It's got a good game library by now, with tons of new big and exciting titles coming soon, which I'll touch on later, and it looks like it's going to be a good commercial headset as well for businesses, with AR capabilities coming soon. Look, the Quest 2 is going to revolutionize VR. Millions and millions of new VR users are going to buy this headset, and really, think Things look great. Game development will be more profitable for VR because there will be more users to buy games, meaning more games will be developed, meaning more people will buy VR because of the good games and player populations within games will improve as well. All in all, this is probably one of the best things to happen to VR since VR went consumer in 2016. And it's very possible that you or someone you know will very soon have their very first VR headset be a Quest 2. And as someone like me that loves VR, this makes me incredibly happy. 
Although I will say that the $299 price point really seems to be looking more like a $350 price point because you're going to want to buy the Elite strap that is sold separately as early reviewers have stated over and over again that the elastic strap that comes with the Quest 2 isn't all that comfortable after extended use. And I do want to mention as well, I've gotten a few questions regarding this and yes, I will be reviewing the Quest 2 on this channel including all of the straps and the battery straps, but uh, unfortunately I wasn't able to get an early review unit. Probably because I say things like this. I want you to know that this headset requires a Facebook account and login. It's practically unusable without it, and Facebook requirements is also likely why this headset is so cheap. VR collects a lot of juicy data about your movements, activities, and surroundings, and data is valuable, especially to a company like Facebook. And also, if you use a fake name on your Facebook account, I wouldn't even bother with this headset, unless you want to risk losing access to every game and DLC that you've ever bought. Road to VR recently reported, quote, if you log in using your Facebook account and violate Facebook community standards, conduct in VR policy or other terms and policies on any of our platforms, your access to or use of Oculus products may be impacted. If your account is fully disabled as a result of this violation, you may also lose access to your games and content. End quote. And yes, this includes not using your actual legal name and birth date. So also, if you're underage, use your mom's account. This is confirmed, so be aware if you're looking at this headset. And I've got more interesting things to talk about regarding Quest, like new games, and supported wireless PC VR air link function over Wi-Fi 6, and 120 hertz functionality, and the Rift platform being practically dead. But first, I think it's time for a me. Break. When I did the math and figured out I spent over $400 on VR games within the past year. <laughs> when Facebook finds out that John Doe isn't actually my legal name and I lose access to the $400 I spent on VR over the past year. <laughs> Fat rip. But let's just get right back to the news. And sorry everyone, but the Rift platform is essentially dead. I think we all saw the writing on the wall over the past year as the Quest received update after update fixing issues and improving the system entirely, and the Rift S sat with the same fundamental issues it has had since launch, like massive microphone problems, USB issues, connection problems, without a word from Oculus. And in a world where the Quest does everything that a Rift S can can do, albeit slightly worse. I wonder why the Rift S existed at all. I mean, back at launch in 2019, the Quest and Rift S were very different devices, but as the Quest improved and gained even PC VR function, the Rift S stagnated. And if you were hoping for a Rift 2, this Facebook Connect, well, that obviously didn't happen. Instead, Oculus made it clear that they are 100% focusing on the Quest 2 and its platform. At this point, in retrospect, it's pretty obvious that Oculus got Lenovo to make a PC VR headset for them, that being the Rift S, slapped on their tracking algorithms and logo, and released it in order to buy time and hold market share until Oculus Link was ready. If you still have a Rift S though, or an original Rift, it's not like your headset will just stop working. It's still a perfectly functional headset, just I wouldn't expect any massive updates, at least for now. And for now, the Rift is dead. Long live the Quest 2. Hybrid headsets are what we're gonna get from now on for the foreseeable future from Facebook, which is great. It's a more functional headset platform. And millions having Quests and Quest 2s means that millions just have a PC VR headset laying around. They just have to build a PC to use that function. But most of them won't, let's be real. And this does make me worried for the state of PC VR in the future. If all the money is to be made selling games on the Quest and the quality difference between Quest and PC is still pretty massive, does this mean that the future of PC VR gaming is going to be filled with upscaled ports of Quest games? I don't know, and I really hope not, and I think it's too early to really tell, but it does worry me, and I'll be covering it as that reality either comes true or false. Maybe they should change the name of the Oculus Rift S to an Oculus Rift F, because we need some Fs in chat after that. But games, 
this is an exciting part. Some amazing new games are coming to VR soon that were announced at Facebook Connect. A new Star Wars VR game called Tales of the Galaxy's Edge looks incredible. And Ubisoft confirmed and announced that big VR exclusives Splinter Cell and Assassin's Creed VR are on their way. Of course, these are all likely to be Oculus exclusives, which sucks. But I have some great news regarding exclusives. Remember Medal of Honor Above and Beyond, a VR game that I am incredibly excited for? It has multiplayer, a story mode, everything. Well, previously it was said to be an Oculus exclusive, but it is now confirmed to be coming to Steam VR as well. I don't know what happened or why that happened, but it did and it's exciting. No revive needed this time, I'll be able to play it on my index. And during Facebook Connect, good old boy John Carmack, consulting CTO and former lead programmer of Doom, had an hour or so long unscripted talk where he talked about a bunch of things VR and Quest 2 related. Two of those being officially supported wireless air link for the Quest 2 and a higher refresh rate option for the headset. In case you don't know, the Quest 2 can function as a wired PC VR headset if you plug it into a USB-C cable. Pretty awesome, but the cool part about the Quest is the wireless part, which you either give up if you want to play PC or you use a program like ALVR or Virtual Desktop. And I was really hoping an officially supported wireless function would be coming, but it never did and Carmack talked about it pretty much saying that the Air Link function just isn't good enough yet to be put out there. Although the Quest 2 does have Wi-Fi 6, which is massively faster than the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi that we have now. So is an Air Link coming in the future? Likely, just not now. He also talked about allowing the headset's display to run at a higher refresh rate like the Valve Index, running at 120 and 144 hertz respectively. Carmack said that while the headset is technically capable of it, while in standalone mode it burns through the battery life way too fast, and while in desktop mode, it creates weird issues like ghosting and blurring. So it seems like we're going to have the 90Hz, 72Hz, and 60Hz that the Quest 2 is advertised for for the foreseeable future. Let's see, uh, what else? Oh, I've been dreaming for an open source VR headset project to pop up that's affordable and looks like we found one. Relativity is a group that sourced a bunch of VR related components and 3D printed parts, as well as packaged software along with the know-how to make your own $200 or less VR headset. The prototype here has 2K by 2K displays running at 120 hertz as well. If you're interested in the project, links will be below, but I may just make a video making my own as well because it's incredibly interesting. Right now, the tracking techniques are crude and not very precise, but it is open source. So if you know better, then you could make a change. It's an exciting world. And now for question of the week from C418, do I actually record these videos on Tuesdays or do you do them a day or two in advance? And uh, yeah, I write, record, and edit them all on Tuesdays. In fact, it's 5 a.m. right now as I'm writing this replying to you. Yeah, Tuesdays are kind of long days, not gonna lie. But if I did them any earlier, I'd possibly maybe miss out on something important, and I've learned that lesson the hard way. And that's question of the week. Make sure to leave your own question below, and I may just answer yours next. I will be streaming on Twitch today, as I do every Tuesday, so come on by and say hi. Also, join up in my Discord server. I do all sorts of events like VR meetups, and if you're looking for a friendly VR community to make your home, come right in. I want to thank all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas like Benji, Fusion Oak, HCG Randon, Ronzarelli, That Brock Guy, Token Engineer, Tristan Sloan, True Killer, Very Evil Shadow, and I'm a cute femboy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, Thrill Out.